I'll talk about Raven. Uh, so, so Raven is our, our model for, um, uh, for, for making uh, T-cell antigens, uh, something that, um, that we think have been quite um, underappreciated in, um, uh, in uh, um, infectious uh, disease um, vaccines. Uh, so, um, so really, uh, our, our key goal here is to distill down the immunogenic component in the whole uh, pathogen into something that is uh, easily produced uh, and, um, and very immunogenic. Um, so for instance, the um, uh, big spaghetti here uh, is um, the spike from uh, SARS-CoV-2 virus, uh, the, uh, the common um, uh, uh, vaccine component uh, that, that is in all the, the, the different uh, um, vaccines that, that are around. Um, and um, it works really well. And the reason that it works really well is that it has a really a lot of, um, of T cell antigens. Uh, so that is what is highlighted here is just one T cell antigen for, for, uh, for, for one uh, person. So uh, like I said before, uh, we all have different HLA, so we're all gonna respond to this uh, quite differently. Um, but uh, there's not always um, a lot of, uh, of, of um, uh, antigens in one of these uh, important uh, subunits. Um, uh, and there's also the, um, uh, the whole uh, uh, concept of uh, you also need T-cells for, for different parts of, uh, of a vaccine. So, so we want to include the whole uh, uh, pathogen. Uh, so uh, here we show uh, the whole uh, genome uh, of uh, the SARS-CoV-2 virus. The purple is a spike. It's a, a small component of the whole virus. Um, so, so what we also would like to do is to uh, take out the crucial components. We call them hotspots uh, uh, that, that, that we can then show the T-cells and, and have a really efficacious vaccine to, to boost um, even more. Uh, and. Um, and uh, so, so what we call a hotspot is really just a collection of T cell antigens. Uh, so, um, so they're gonna be, again, different from person to person. So we really need to make sure that, that we have a good collection and we have the right collection. Um, so so that, that is what uh, this will do. Um, so uh, uh, as I've also told you that, uh, that you really need T cells uh, to, um, uh, to, to get uh, the, the B cells going, which is the antibody producing cells. Uh, so, um, so, so if we provide the right uh, T cells, we can really uh, boost the antigen response. Um, yeah, so that we have also shown here, uh, and this is a, a quite nice small study uh, where we, um, we have two different primers. We have the classical uh, spike uh, uh, protein, and then we have two uh, T cell uh, uh, vaccines. So they are only some of these small components uh, th that we take out, uh, and we made two of them uh, just to show that it works twice. Um, and then we boost with the spike um, uh, molecule. So, um, so the interesting here is, is on, the, uh, on the left and the right, is that the antibody titers, they go up uh, to a similar level to the uh, normal vaccine, uh, and, and they, they catch up using only a single shot uh, of the spike uh, protein. Um, and you might ask, why then do something that is already as good as the other vaccine? But the really key feature here of these T-cell vaccines is that they're really, really easy to make. So we can make them in DNA, we can make them in RNA, we can make them in DNA. We make them for our personalized trials. That means that we make them really fast and we make them like we need them. Okay, we make them in a couple of weeks. So, so they are incredibly easy to make and they work across a different modalities. Uh, so that is why there are a lot of potential in, in having these T-cell vaccines. Um, and one of the potential here is in a corona-like situation. Uh, where you, it takes a while to get the spike virus in production and it takes a while to actually confirm that it works. But we know that the T cell part is gonna work. So we start making that and then we start uh, production on the uh, SARS coronavirus. So once we have the vaccine, uh, the B cell vaccine, we already have primed the immune system for this vaccine. Uh, and that means that the response this time is gonna be drastically faster. Um, and then we have also seen uh, that, um, that, that we know from cancer and, and viruses that we need killer T cells. So that's a, a separate part of the immune system and they surveil cells that are infected or cancerous and then they kill them. Um, 
so so um, so we also what, what if we only target these? What if we don't have any Bezel component? Um, and first and foremost, we we try to find these hotspots, uh, and then here we. Uh, targeted a mouse because that's the one what we're going to test it on and we saw that we got quite a good hit rate on so what we predicted we got almost all of them uh, a response against almost all of them uh, which is really nice but also crucially on the right uh, we actually see that these mice that are vaccinated with this they can survive a, a lethal challenge uh, so they do get sick it's, it's not as, as a greater vaccine as a B cell vaccine but they are protective and this is a vaccine that we can make in week, weeks so we so as soon as any virus comes, as soon as we know the DNA, this is really really fast to to do, uh, then we can start producing a vaccine. And, in, and so far we have done this many 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 times. It has worked every time. So you can always produce a vaccine. As really the sort of the key uh, to these uh, vaccines is that they are so fast. Um, yeah. So uh, so so we have a, a model. And then we have different ways to, to utilize it. So we have the standalone T cell vaccine that I just talked about. Uh, it, it is protective. It is not, um, it is not the, the, the best vaccine, but it is uh, very fast and it works very well. Then we have the, the prime uh, combo with a, a B cell vaccine, which you can sort of prepare. And then so the response time is a little slower, but it's still quite fast. Uh, and then finally, um, we are also developing into the, uh, the the model that we can now gr graft these um, T cell uh, epitopes that we find into the B cell, so we have like a, a, a one structure vaccine, uh, a more classical vaccine that, that takes out longer, but it's um, uh, really high in, in protectiveness. Um, so the the way that this works is that you um, uh, pick your viral genomes. So um, sometimes it's just one virus that, that comes up, sometimes it's a whole family of viruses. Uh, so you bunch those together um, and um, you run them through a vaccine you find out what type of epitopes are there. Then you um, decide on a target population, this we look up in a database, so we know all the uh, many thousands of HLA types, uh, and then you look what, how are they distributed in this population, um, and then you have a extremely large matrix of millions of potential antigens. Um, and then you, uh, and then the key thing here is really selecting the right hotspots that are complementary to each other. Because I'm not going to respond to the same uh, antigens as somebody else. So you need maybe uh, some for me, some for, for somebody else. And then if somebody else is also responding to mine, so you sort of have this extreme combinatorial um, space that you need to distill the virus down into the, the right hotspots. Um, so, so that is the, the, the key challenge here. Um, yeah, so, uh, so we have looked at this uh, in the hindsight of 2020. Uh, so we have looked at what people have discovered in SARS-CoV-2. Um, so that is uh, uh, the, the peaks going up. Uh, and then we have looked at what, what predictions did we make on day one of the, um, of the, the pandemic. Um, and uh, we think they line up quite nicely. It took uh, at least uh, eight months to, uh, to find the, the purple peaks, uh, and it took us a day to find the, the blue peaks uh, that is going down. So, so uh, it, it really is a, a fast response platform. Uh, that's how we initially designed it uh, to be. Um, and then we have, uh, uh, now that, that we're on the other side, we have started looking into this uh, structural modeling. How can we take these T-cell uh, epitope vaccines to the next level? Um, uh, and, um, and then you choose your, your B cell antigen, uh, and um, we're just seeing how great Eden are at, at choosing B cell antigens, so that's a good starting point. Um, uh, or, or you maybe sometimes you just have one. So in the terms of uh, South Corona 2, you really only have a spike that is going to be good protection. So that, that's, your, that's what you have to work with. So that is also what we designed this from, is, is uh, from viruses, where you... <coughs> You just have, the, 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 it's very limited selection, but we are also seeing indications that it, it's working quite well in the bacterial space. Um, yeah, and then we, um, we simply insert these uh, T cell epitopes from either across the genome or across the whole pan genome of all the different uh, viruses into one antigen. Um, and how we're doing this is, um, is, is through um, 
a, a structural modeling tool. Uh, so this is also something that, the, that we developed a while ago and are still actively developing. Uh, so it's, um, it's an autoencoder uh, generative model that, that looks at small uh, structure components and it encodes them into this. Uh, it's called a latent space. So it's, again, it's just a big matrix of numbers, but it, it captures some very crucial things that you cannot see when you look at the structure on a computer or using your human brain. Uh, it's something that only the machines can see. Um, and that means that we have a, a bigger um, space to graph these uh, peptides into, so we can really make some uh, extremely efficient vaccines using this technology. Um, yeah, so, uh, so it, this is uh, used in um, some of our newer uh, uh, products, and it's, um, uh, yeah, so it, it, we're really exploring how we can use these, uh, so it's only a few components that you need to add, to really, really improve the efficacy uh, of a vaccine. Um, yeah, so we are finding these hotspots uh, and we are um, <coughs> uh, we're really utilizing our capabilities in the personalized uh, space to, uh, to make fast uh, vaccines. Uh, and we can also see that we can choose to uh, target specifically T cell epitopes that really boost uh, B cell vaccine candidates uh, and make a really great antibody response. Yeah, thank you.